so i hope you are having fun with uh, the course uh, so far so in this tutorial we will be discussing how to orient the molecules we'll look at some complex molecules i know we have already discussed the rules and all how to orient the molecules in cartesian coordinate system but we'll take uh, at least uh, two examples which are little bit cumbersome to orient and then we'll see what all precautions we have to take because once you put a molecule correctly in cartesian coordinate system the rest of the job like applying symmetry operations and all becomes easier so let us start with second tutorial so let us discuss this i have already given in home assignment but let us uh, discuss this case because uh, the next molecule will be in comparison to this particular case so let us discuss octahedral case so to draw octahedral i will draw it as a rectangle something like this where at the vertices i have four b atoms and these are my a b bonds and then there is one b above the plane and one b below the plane right so now this is my x y z so this particular molecule is rather straightforward I mean, it looks complex but it's straightforward in the sense that the a goes in the center and then you have b on the top and b at the bottom those are let me draw the bonds with different colors and the other b one of the b's will be uh, on to this axis and the other b will be on to this axis right and all the bonds and this is the triangle which we are drawn here so it's something like this so my principal axis is c4 axis which is oriented along z axis so c4 is uh, along z axis and then the xz plane has to have the highest number of atoms so in this case yz and xz plane would have equal number of atoms so this is my xz plane along which i have 3b atoms right so if i mark it as 1 Two, three, four, five, six. My x z plane contains b one, b five, b six, and a. Right. And similarly, y z plane contains y z will have b one, b five, b six, b three. and a so xz and yz plane in this case contains equal number of atoms but if there is any confusion xz plane should contain more number of atoms as compared to yz plane if there is discrepancy here okay so this is rather easier and while we are at this molecule let us also list down the symmetry elements and corresponding operations right so what are the symmetry elements present the first and foremost is e followed by c4 the c4 which is along z axis now also the c4 will also have uh, there would also be a c2 along this then there would be c2 prime c2 double prime so c4 is along z axis now c2 is also along z axis c2 prime this will be perpendicular to z axis so it will be either x or y so there will be two c2 primes right then similarly there will be how many c2 double primes so c2 double primes which is bisecting the x y axis so there would be two c2 double primes and there would be i 
then we have let us we will do this counting i'm just counting from the top so we'll do this counting again so we'll see we'll have s4 then s6 will be there and there will also be a c3 we will see where the c3 is how many c3s are there s6 is there sigma h is there and sigma d is there right now let us try to count how many such axes are there so one of the c4 is along z axis similarly another c4 will also be along x axis and y axis so there will be three such c4 axis now about c3 where is the c3 axis so if you try to draw this molecule in a way where you can so this is my a this is b b b and this is not all b's in plane so all the three b's are coming actually out of the plane of the board and these three b's are coming at the back going at the back so behind the plane of the board so this is how my c3 now the c3 will be perpendicular to the plane of the board so if you see i am looking through my x y z axis so each of this is x y z and i am looking through it right so if you see that uh, my c3 is actually equi angle so c3 is equi angle from x y z axis okay it is somewhere in the middle of x y and z axis so i am looking at b2 b5 and b3 so this is my b2 b3 and b5 and at the back is b1 b4 and b6 so i hope you can easily see this okay so how many such c3s will be there now so you have to find such triplets so you have one such triplet here then you have b3 b5 b4 another triplet and then you have b1 b5 b2 so you have to keep on counting all such and then you will see that there are four such c3 axis okay so if you want we can list it down so you have b2 b3 b5 so you are passing through this and you are also passing through you are also rotating b1 b4 b6 this is one c3 now second c3 will be if you let's say if you count b3 b4 b5 b3 b4 b5 so if you count this b3 b4 b5 the rest of the three will be b1 b2 b6 b1 b2 b6 you will be rotating this this is my second c3 okay now third c3 can be now b1 b2 b6 is done so it can be b at this back so b1 b4 b5 right so b1 b4 b5 okay and so on so you can count that there will be three and then four c3 such axis now c2 which is along z axis or which is collinear with c4 so if there are three such c4s then there will be three such c2 axis okay about c2 primes so c2 prime will be along x axis and along y axis if we are considering the flipping of b5 and b6 okay so you can say that one of the c2 prime is along b2 so c2 prime is b2 a b4 okay the second is b1 a b3 then there would also be another one which is along no this is the c2 prime which we are talking about right so no i think there is some mistake this would be all together six c2 primes so c2 primes let us list them down so not these ones because these ones are actually these c2s which are collinear with c4 so we are not talking about these ones let's see so you have 
C2 primes which are now in between the bonds. So which are the six C2 primes? So you can see that it is B2, A, B3 bisecting B2, A, B3. This angle. Then at the same time, this will also be bisecting B1, A, B4. Okay. And it will be flipping B5, A, B6 or B5 to B6. Okay. So this is one. Now let's also find another such pair. So you have B1, A, B2, B3, A, B4. So these are the angles which this C2 prime is bisecting. Now this is one, this is one. Similarly, you have one going in XZ plane. So this was in XY plane. Both of these are in XY plane. Right? So similarly, you will find two pairs in XZ plane and two pairs in YZ plane. Right? So that gives you six such C2 primes. I is only one. S4 will be equal to the number of uh, C4 axis. So if you have three C4s, you will have three S4s. S6 should be equal to number of uh, C3 axis. So if there are four C3 axis, so there will be four S6 axis. Sigma H. So you have X, Y plane as the Sigma H, then Y, Z plane, and then the X, Z plane. So that means there will be three such Sigmas. And Sigma Ds will be now collinear with, coplanar with C2 primes. So if there are six C2 primes, you have six Sigma Ds, right? So I hope I have not made it more confusing, but I would suggest you to work out this example again by yourself so that it is very, very clear. Now let us go to a even difficult molecule than this one. It's not, well, the molecule is not difficult. It's just that it is visualization is sometimes more cumbersome. Okay. So now let's see that I have same molecule A. The central metal or the central atom has the similar octahedral symmetry. But now I have these two connected with bonds. Okay. So now the case is not as simple. So now if you try to draw this molecule again in the same fashion, it will not work. So if I'm trying to draw it like this, And then I'm saying that I have connected these, 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 then it will not work. Okay, this is my x, y, z, minus z, minus x, minus y. All right. So let us say that this is it. So now, what are the symmetry elements? Can you identify the symmetry elements here? So if you look at the octahedral case we had E, so E will still be existing. C4, which was collinear with Z axis or X axis or Y axis, ceases to exist because if you try to do a C4 rotation, this particular B comes here. So let us number these one, two, three, four, five, and six. So B3 goes to B1. If I do a C4 axis and B1 goes to B2, right? Now, if you do that, let's try to do this operation C4. Let us see. So you have A. So now I have B1 here and my B3 comes here. Okay. And what happens to B2, B2 goes here 
and now B3 and B2 are connected, right? B3 and B2 are connected. And what happens to B4? B4 comes here, right? B4 comes here. And my B5 and B6 remain as such because this is C4 along that axis. So B4 was connected to B5 and B1 is connected to B6, right? Now you see that these bonds, if I do a C4 rotation, these bonds make these two configurations different. So I can say that one is not equivalent to two, right? Whereas in case of octahedral, it's because these bonds are not there, so one and two are equivalent. So that's why C4 exists. In this particular case, C4 does not exist. So if I cannot have C4 axis, which is my principal axis in octahedral case, so in this case, what is my principal axis? So the next order axis was in that case, it was C3, right? So let us see if the C3 axis exists. So let us try to draw this molecule in the way so that we can easily draw a C3 axis. So you have A, B. So this is uh, B5. Then I have B1. Then I have B2. Okay. So I'm looking from center of the XYZ side. Okay, and at the back I have B3, B4, and B6. And now what all are joined? B1, B6 is joined. B4 and B5 are joined. B3 and B2 are joined. And now my C3 axis is perpendicular to this plane of the board going through these triangles okay going through these imaginary triangle equilateral triangles okay there are two such triangles making a star like appearance now if i do a c3 axis so we want to see whether c3 axis exists or not so because we are trying to find out what is the principal axis here so if i do a c3 operation what do i get We have to also carefully see if the bonds remain at the same positions. These will remain at the same positions. But if the bonds are also same. So this is my B1. So B1 goes here. B2 comes here. It's an anti-clockwise rotation with 120 degrees. And B5 comes over here. Similarly, B6 goes here. B3 comes here and b4 comes here now original connections were b4 to b5 okay then b1 to b6 okay and b3 to b2 okay so now if you see that the bonds are also at the same position so i can say that my configuration third and fourth are equivalent right so then I can say that C3 is existing. So that means my C3 is actually the principal axis. Now the rules of uh, assigning the molecule to a coordinate system says that you have to align your principal axis to the coordinate system, right? So now how do I assign this molecule? So, so that would mean that this is not a correct representation of the molecule along the coordinate axis so this is not the correct way okay so what is the correct way then the correct way would be if you draw this molecule so that my z axis is along c3 axis how do i draw my z axis along c3 axis so if i'm looking from the top something like this this is my x y minus x minus y and this is at the origin my central atom now xz plane should have more number of atoms as compared to yz plane or any other random area so then i will draw one of the bonds 
which is coming out of the plane of the board as along xz so this is my one bond this is second b this is third b right similarly the opposite end will have one b second b so if you want to draw the same triangle or same rectangle which was drawn here so these are the four atoms which are forming the rectangle and these are the two opposite atoms and where are the bonds which are connecting so these are the bonds which are connecting the 10 b atoms right so if you orient the molecule like this you should be able to find out what are the other symmetry operations so for example now c3 axis is along z axis which is clear so that makes my principal axis so what are the symmetry elements i have e then i have c3 then what else i have here how many c3 axis are there that also we can see how many c3 axis will be there there will be one c3 axis okay and then you have c2 axis and that will be all where is the c2 axis now so c2 axis will be so if i c2 axis will be in between x y this will be my c2 axis similarly there will be another c2 axis which will be like this right so that means i am reflecting this b with this b this b with this b okay and if i am doing this one then i'll be reflecting these two b's and these two b's right and then these two b's so let us try to work it out let's draw this molecule and see how the c2 axis works actually because otherwise it will remain as a confusion so let me draw this molecule again this is my x minus x y minus y and the molecule looks like this you have a b so these are all 120 degree angles excuse me for the bad drawing then you have b B. B. now if i name them so you have one two three four five six let me now draw a c2 axis which is bisecting b4 and b3 and b1 and b2 okay so if i do a this will actually be a let us draw this molecule again maybe because the angles are not appearing correct so let me just draw it again so let's be more careful in drawing x minus x y minus y so you have okay so i've tried to keep this angle as 30 degrees then i have and these are wedge like projections okay and then this one would also be like 30 degree so this angle is 30 degree this angle is also 30 degree this is 60 degree 60 30 okay. so now this is my these are my b's so it looks better than what it was earlier 
So you have B1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay. Now, where is my C2 axis? So C2 axis will be reflecting B2 and B5. So let's also first connect the bonds. So my B3, B5, B1, B2, B4, B6. Let's say these are the ones which are connected. So if I now do a this reflection, then my B2, B5 will be replaced. B1, B3 will be replaced and b4 b6 will be replaced okay so then if i do this i will still have it so we have to see if the bonds are also reflected accordingly okay so this is my b b b b B. B. now i said b2 b5 will be reflected so b2 and so b5 then upon doing c2 b4 and b6 will be reflected so b6 goes to b4 and b1 is replaced with b3 now the original connections were b1 b2 b3 b5 and b4 b6 so my bonds are also in the same place so i can say my the first is equivalent to configuration 2 right so that's how c2 will be reflected uh, c2 will be existing so the only elements in this particular case will be e c3 and c2 and there'll be one such c3 and three such c2 elements we can of course find out what are the number of corresponding operations but we can see that there are three such c2s see one is between minus x y minus y x similarly another will be from this side and third will be from using the z axis as the plane right so there will be three such uh, c2s present okay so that reduces a lot of uh, symmetry elements as compared to the octahedral molecule once we join these atoms with bonds the octahedral group reduces to a very small number of uh, symmetry elements we'll see what are the point groups and all but let's not go into those details so i hope uh, the visualization part which is very very important for this course is now clear to some extent we should be also practicing a lot of molecules pick up any molecule look out any object around you and try to find out what are the symmetry elements and symmetry operations i'll give you some example for example try to find out for letter e what are the symmetry elements present try to find out for the word mom okay what are the symmetry elements present it's a 2d picture let's say try to see for example a hexagonal sharpened pencil okay try to see what are the symmetry elements and operations present so pick up any object around you and see which has some symmetry see what are the symmetry elements present so that this particular concept of visualization is very very clear in your heads okay otherwise it will keep on getting accumulated and uh, you will face a lot of issues in the later part of the course okay so that will be all any questions please shoot me an email thank you